Hello and welcome to chapter 12. Today we're going to look at section 12.3, which deals with a tangent line problem. Now so far, um, in chapter 12 we've been dealing with more calculus type concepts. And calculus is a branch of math that actually studies rates of change of functions. And these rates of change have many applications in real life. Now, so far we've talked about the slope of a line, and the slopes of a line, they actually do indicate a rate at which the line is either rising or falling, depending on whether we have a positive or negative slope. Now, for a line, the rate is the same at every point on the line. That's because it has a constant, continuous slope. Now, when we deal with graphs other than lines, the rate in which the graph is either rising or falling will change depending on what point we're looking at on that graph. And an example of that would be the, a parabola. If I look at my slope here at this point, I'm going to have a different, different slope there than I would if I look at this point or this point. Now, these are positive slopes. Once I hit this point here, I see I have a slope of zero. And then as I go in this direction, now I have negative slopes. So not only does my slope change from being steep or less steep, I'm also going to change signs possibly as a positive or negative slope. And in order to find the rate at a single point, we can find the slope of the tangent line at the point that's given to us. So here's three different examples. If we want to find the slope right here, we're just going to find the slope of the tangent line. Or if we want to find the rate of change at this point here, we're going to find the slope of the tangent line. And just as we did in the first two examples, the same thing here. If we want to find the rate at point P, we're going to find the slope of the tangent line there. So example one says, to look at the graph of f of x equals x cubed, we want to approximate the slope at the point 1, 1. So if we sketch this graph, we now need to calculate the slope of the tangent line at our point 1, 1. So I'm looking at this slope right here. Now if I approximate this, I know that the slope is equal to the change in y divided by the change in x. And you can just do an approximation and we get roughly, for every three units that I rise, I'm going to go over one unit to the right. So it's approximately a slope of three. And if you graph these on your calculator or do these by hand, um, I think that'll be a little bit easier to see. Now, a more precise way for approximating a tangent line is to use what we call the secant line. And if you recall from geometry, your secant line is actually the line that goes through the point of tangency and hits a second point on the graph. So if I'm trying to find my tangent line here, I'm actually going to go through the point of tangency and it's going to hit a second point on the line over here. Now the point x, f of x, which is right here, this is our point of tangency. And the point x plus h, f of x plus h, which is right here, this is our second point on the graph. So we want to calculate the slope of our secant line. And we're going to do that by taking the change in y and dividing it by the change in x. Well, your change in y is really equal to this right here. We're going to go f of x plus h, which is right here. And we're going to subtract f of x to give us this right here. So I end up with f of x plus h minus f of x for my change in y and our change in x then comes from going x plus h minus x so x plus h minus x and if you notice our x's are going to cancel and that's going to leave us with f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. And this should look pretty familiar as this right here is really our difference quotient. Now if you look at these four graphs, what you'll notice is we have our secant line, 
which is the red line that runs through the two points, as that secant line gets closer and closer to our point of tangency, or x, f of x, we eventually approach the tangent line. So as h approaches 0, the secant line approaches your tangent line. Therefore, we can use the limit process, since a limit is approaching something, to find the exact slope. And the definition of slope, and that's slope m, at the point x f of x is equal to the slope of the tangent line at that same point. And we find that by taking the limit as h approaches 0 of your secant. And if you recall from um, the, the previous slide, the secant, or the slope of the secant, was actually equal to our difference quotient, which was f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. So in example two, it says to find the slope of the graph of f of x equals x cubed at the specific point 2, 8. We're going to begin by finding the slope of our secant. And the slope of our secant is equal to the difference quotient, or f of 2 plus h. And if you notice, I'm replacing the x um, of x plus h with a 2 because 2 is in my x spot. So f of 2 plus h minus f of 2, and I'm going to divide all of that by h. So now if we simplify, I really have 2 plus h, the quantity cubed, minus the quantity of 2 cubed, divided by h. And when we simplify, this gives us h cubed plus 6h squared plus 12h plus 8 and then minus 8. And that minus 8 is um, subtracting the 2 to the third power and we're still dividing by h. So now if I go ahead and simplify, I see that my 8's are going to cancel. I can't simplify anything else with the h cubed, the h squared, and the h term, but what I can do is I can factor an h out. So that's going to leave me with h times the quantity of h squared plus 6h plus 12, and all of that's going to be divided by h. My h's will then cancel, and that's going to leave me with the quantity of h squared plus 6h plus 12, and if I take my limit as h approaches 0 of my secant, or the h squared plus 6h plus 12, when I plug a 0 in for each one of these h's here and here, I see that I end up with a slope that is equal to 12 at the point 2, 8. Example 3 is very similar. It says find the slope of the graph of f of x equals a negative 3x plus 5. So again, I'm going to start out by taking or finding the slope of my secant. And the slope of my secant is equal to the difference quotient, or f of x plus h minus f of x, and if you notice in this one here, they did not give me a specific point, so I'm just looking for the general slope. So I'm going to take that and I'll divide everything by h, and when I plug this in, I end up with a negative 3 times x plus h plus 5, and then it tells me to subtract f of x, and f of x is equal to negative 3x plus 5, so I'm going to subtract a negative 3x plus 5, and I'm going to divide the whole thing by h. So when I distribute and simplify, I end up with a negative 3x minus 3h plus 5 plus 3x minus 5, and you do have to distribute the negative from the subtraction, all divided by h. So from here, I see that my 5's are going to cancel. I still have, oops, I have a negative 3x and a positive 3x. 
So I'm left with a negative 3h in the numerator, and I'm going to be dividing that by h. So what I can do now is I see both of these have an h that it can be canceled, and I'm going to take the limit. So the limit as h approaches 0 of a negative 3 is equal to a negative 3. Now let's just double check for a second. If I look at my original function, I have a linear function. Negative 3x plus 5 has a slope of a negative 3 because it's a straight line, and my slope comes from this piece right here. Negative 3 is my slope. Negative 3 is what I just calculated using the difference quotient. And finally, example 4 says to find the formula for the slope of the graph of f of x equals x squared minus 2. Then we want to know what are the slopes at the given points negative 3, 7 and 1, negative 1. So just like the previous two examples, we're going to start out by finding the slope of the secant. And that's equal to our f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. And to do this, we're going to end up with the quantity of x plus h squared minus 2 and then minus our function, which is x squared minus 2. We're going to divide that by h. So this gives us x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 2 minus x squared plus 2 divided by h. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out my x squared terms and my 2's. And when I simplify this, now I have 2xh plus h squared divided by h. And I see that we have an h in both pieces of the numerator. So we can factor an h out, and that's going to give us 2x plus h divided by h. By factoring that out, we're now able to cancel out an h from the numerator and the denominator, and then we are left with the quantity of 2x plus h. Now, we need to find the slope of the secant line, and to find the slope of the secant line, we need to take the limit. So we're going to say the limit as h approaches 0 of 2x plus h is equal to, if I plug in a 0 for h, we're left with just the 2x piece. So this is the first part. This is the formula for the slope of the graph at any given point. Now we were asked to find the slope specifically at the point negative 3, 7. So to do that, all we're going to do is we're going to plug in a negative 3 in for our x. So we have 2 times negative 3 is going to give us a negative 6. And this is the slope. And likewise, we'll do the same thing for the coordinate point 1, negative 1. The slope at this point is going to be found by taking 2 times 1, which gives us 2, and this is equal to our second slope. So now we found the slope of this function at two different specific points. And this will conclude part 1 of section 12.3. Your fun fact will actually be with part 2. So have a good night, and we'll see you all tomorrow.